Section 6 of Selected Works, Letters, Sketches and Stories by Voltairine de Clare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Alone, Sagan of Selected Works, Letters, Sketches and Stories by Voltairine de Clare. I was wrong. I thought she wanted the insurance money, but I misunderstood her. I found it out one wild October day more than a year later, when for the second time I sought the end of the alley. The sufferer had suffered out. The gaunt and wasted shell of a man lay no more by the window in the upper story. The woman was free. Rest at last, I thought, for both of them. But it was not as I thought. I expected ease to come into the woman's drawn face and relaxation to her stooping figure. But something else came upon both something quite unwanted and inexplicable a wandering look in the eyes a stupid drop to the mouth an uncertainty in her walk as of one who is half-minded to go back and look for something there was too an irritating irregularity in the performance of her work which began to be annoying at last on that october day this new unreliability reached the limit of provocation i was leaving the city i needed my laundry needed it at once, and here it was four o'clock in the afternoon, the train due at night, and packing impossible till the wash came. It was five days overdue. The wind was howling furiously, the rain driving in sheets, but there was no alternative. I must get to the end of the alley, and back somehow. The grey, rain-drenched atmosphere was still greyer in the alley, still, still greyer at the end, and what with the grey of it and the rain of it, I could scarcely see the thing that sat facing me when I opened the door, a sort of human blur, hunched in a rocking chair, its head sunken on its breast. In response to my startled exclamation, the face was lifted vacantly for a second, and then dropped again. But I had seen, drunk, and dead drunk, and this woman had never drunk. I looked around the wretched room, by the window where the grey light trailed in, stood a table covered with unwashed dishes some late flies were crawling in the gutters of slop besotted derelicts of insects stupidly staggering up and down the cracked china on the stove stood this number of flat irons but there was no fire a mass of unironed clothes lay on an old couch and over the backs of two unoccupied chairs on the wall above the couch hung the portrait of a dead man i walked to a slumping figure in the rocker and with ill-contained brutality demanded so this is why you did not bring my clothes where are they i heard my own voice cutting like the edge of a knife and felt half ashamed when that weak shaking thing lifted up its foolish face and stared at me with watery uncomprehending eyes my clothes i reiterated are they here or upstairs guess so stammered the uncertain voice G guess so nothing for it but to find them myself i muttered beginning the search through the pile on the couch nothing of mine there so i needs must climb to the golgotha on the second floor from which the cross had disappeared but which still bore traces of its victim's long crucifixion a pair of old bed slippers still by the window a sleeping cap on the wall some cannot but leave so the things that have touched their dead one by one i found the rough dry garments here there in the hallway in the garret hanging or crumpled up among dozens of others and all the while i hunted the rain beat and the wind blew and a low third sound kept mingling with them rising from the lower floor my heart smote me when i heard it for i knew it was the woman sobbing the self-righteous pharisee within me gave an impatient sneer alcohol tears but something else clutched at my throat and i found myself glancing at the dead man's shoes when i went downstairs i avoided the rocking chair tied up my bundle counted out the money laid it on the table and then turning round said deliberately and harshly where is your money don't buy a whiskey with it mrs bossert crying had a little sobered her she looked up still with less light in her face than in an intelligent dog's but with some dim self-consciousness it was as a face that had appeared behind deforming bubbles of water she half lifted her hand let it fall and stammered no i won't i was it don't do nobody no good the senseless desire to preach says hold of me mrs bussert i cried out aren't you ashamed of yourself a woman like you who went through so much and so long and so bravely and now when you could get along all right to act like this the soggy mouth dropped open the glazy eyes stared at me fixedly and foolishly 
then shifted to the portrait on the wall and with a mawkish simper as of some old drab playing sixteen she slobbered out nodding to the portrait all for the love of him it was so utterly ludicrous that i laughed then a cold rage took me look here i said and again i heard my own voice grim and quiet cutting the air like a whip if you believe as i have heard you say that your husband can look down on you from anywhere remember you couldn't do a thing to hurt him worse than you are doing now love indeed the lash went home the stricken figure huddled closer the voice came out like a dumb thing's moan oh i'm all alone then suddenly i understood i had taken it for mockery and profanation that leering look at the window on the wall that driveling stammer all for the love of him and it had been a solemn thing no lover's word spoken in the morning of youth with the untried day before it under the seductive witchery of answering breath and kisses rushing blood and throbbing bodies but the word of a woman bent with service seamed with labour haggard with watching the word of a woman who at the washtub had kept her sufferer by the work of her hands and watched him between the snatches of her sleep the immemorial passion of a common heart that is not much that had not much and has lost all years were in it for years she had had her burden to carry and she had carried it to the edge of the grave there it had fallen from her and her arms were empty nothing to do any more alone she sat up suddenly with a momentary flare of light in her face as long as i had him she said i could do i thought i'd be glad when he was gone a many and many a time but i rather he was up there yet i did everything i didn't put him away mean there was a hundred and twenty-five dollars insurance i spent it all on him he was covered with flowers the flare died down and she fell together like a collapsing bag i saw the grey vacancy moving inward toward the last spark of intelligence in her eyes as an ashing coal whitens inward toward the last dull red point of fire then this heap of rags shuddered with an inhuman whine alone in the crowding shadows i felt the desolation pressing me like a vice behind that sunken heap in the chair gathered a midnight spectre for a moment i caught a flash from its royal malignant eyes the monarch of human ruins the murderous bridegroom of widowed souls king alcohol after all as well that way as another i muttered and aloud but the whip cord had gone out of my voice the money is on the table she did not hear me the bridegroom had given his beloved sleep i went out softly into the wild rain and overheard among the lashing arms of the leafless trees and around the alley pocket the wind was whining alone end of alone second